Good morning. How are you doing today, Jim? Hi, Arrow. I'm 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 good. I'm good. You woken up? <laughs> Don't you? But you know what? That feeling of waking up when you're a creative person. It's like, okay, here we go. The slate is clean. What is going to come through me today? Right. Exactly. Wow. What can I? What, what will the day accomplish? You Let's are the go. wizard behind the curtain. There's so much that you have touched and brought to life, and and you know we we know the story, but so many people don't know your story. Yeah. Um, well, I grew up in the New Jersey area, and uh, I just adored animation when I was a child, and I wanted to do that. That was my goal, and I would study it at the California Institute of the Arts. And that's what brought me out to brought me out to California. I had great mentors there. I had a wonderful story teacher named Joe Raft, and uh, he was one of the greatest story men in the history of animation. And he pointed me in the direction that there's this job you can do within animation called story development, or we call story. That's where you would storyboard films and, and help create characters. And you know, you're at the genesis of these movies. And I decided that's what I wanted to do. That's what I needed to do. And uh, and I had a roommate, blessedly, that was a live action student. <laughs> and I would go see his. I would go into his classes. And I would you know? And I adored obviously live action movies. And I thought to myself, why aren't we telling these stories also in animation? And I wanted to pursue. You know, as I started getting more interested to tell stories in animation, I went. That's what I want to really do is push the boundaries, storytelling and animation, and, you know, and try to, you know, instill in animation the, this breath of diversity and, and, and storytelling in live action movies into animation and not necessarily make them like live action movies, mm -hmm. but be able to tell different types of stories that way. So that, that led me down this path. Eventually I made it to Disney animation and worked on The Lion King. And from Disney, which was my first film I did develop a story on. And then uh, from Disney, for, after five years, I went to Pixar. Wow. And I was there on the second movie, they, they made Bugs Life. And at Pixar, I was able to work with uh, Jan Pinkova, who was the original director of Ratatouille. Yes. And I was the second, uh, <laughs> the second artist on that, aside from him. Um, became his head of story where I would run the story team of storyboard artists. And also I convinced Jan that we write the script. And so we, you know, I, I was at the genesis of that film and developed then. And we got worked with Brad Bird later on. And we, the three of us got an Oscar nomination <laughs> for story and script on that film. And that was an honor. And then continued on there, worked on many, many films, great stuff. I directed a short film there called Your Friend the Rat, wrote it and directed it. It's fun, different educational edutainment <laughs> film about how rats and humans should get along, <laughs> told by Remy. And uh, from there, once I left Pixar around 2016, I continued to want to explore and develop kind of my creativity and yeah. what I could tell. Yeah. And ended up directing the 2D animation for Mary Poppins Returns. Uh, you know, my career, it's been great because I've always come back to 2D drawn animation. <laughs> and even the world went computer animation while I was, um, and that's why I went into animation was to do, to develop and to, to do drawn animation because I grew up on Warner Brothers films and uh, Disney films. So uh, that's what I wanted to continue to do. And then computer animation showed up and I was like, okay, well, it's, at least I was storyboarding, so I was still drawing and doing what I, I love. So, and I've grown to appreciate computer animation, but it's never been my complete right. you know, love. So, but throughout my career, I've been able to keep turning back to drawn animation and the handcrafted animation forms, and now with the inventor stop motion, and uh, and uh, yeah, it's been a great career so far. It's been just amazing well you can see that animation the passion you have for it in the inventor because i mean you use animation along with stop motion and i think god oh, the balance is just so perfect because you, you allow me to escape in so many different levels in the imagination yeah well i think that's what animation is just uh it's just a magical art form mm -hmm. in that it includes all the art forms within one art form you know it has filmmaking it has, uh, in the case of stop motion, you would have sculpture and, and uh, you know, 
you know, uh, you even have engineering and all these other forms too. Um, drawn animation, obviously, you have drawing, um, but there's dance in it too. There's timing of dance. There's a musicality to it. You know, there's definitely music, but there's within animation itself. Uh, there's acting. There's you know. So it's it to me is a beautiful art form, and um, it, it brings you to a child again. I mean, mm -hmm. even though it's labeled as a for kids, unfortunately, in a lot of people's minds. It, I, I think in a lot of people, even adults, and I think today is a good, you know, it's evolving in a way. And I think a lot of people our age and stuff have grown up on so much animation and, and stuff that I think it's becoming more acceptable. Uh, you know, you see things like Into the Spider-Verse and mm -hmm, stuff mm -hmm. where it's like attracting adults as well as children and everything. So it's very exciting time actually in animation i think because uh a lot of avenues in this sort of journey i've been on is really opening up and uh um you know it's it's just I, you know i think it's a good time yeah. and there's and then also the the getting into it or, or learning about it is so much easier today because there's so many tools out there there's so many <laughs> uh avenues and so many schools teaching about it when i went cal i mentioned cal arts california city arts who was the only animation school in the country um you know you had school of visual arts in new york but they they had an animation program but today you have multiple animation schools you have multiple more and more programs a lot of you it seems like every university has some sort of animation program so it's just an exciting time um it's just growing growing and more respect for it i think i, I hope you're, you're spot on on that when it comes to it's it's so readily available because I have broadcasting students that are coming to class and they're working on animation. I go, we're, we're supposed to be doing radio and television. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll get to that. I But this is what I want to work on. And and you're so right about that because, I mean, and they want to build these storylines. But but you bring up a very interesting point here. There has to be a story, doesn't there? You can't just put up pretty pictures. Oh, no. There has to be a story. I mean... Uh, I mean, you could tell a short film, maybe a really short film, uh, a couple of minutes, you know, very like experimental film in animation. It could be magical, it'd be beautiful, like a work of art. But for a longer form, you need a story. It's just like any, you know, a good book, uh, a good movie, a live action movie. You want to hold that audience. You want to tell something that will transform them, will speak to them uh bring them to another place uh you want something that they'll carry on with mm -hmm. them you know i think the best movies and the best stories are ones that you can't forget about and you want to come back to again and again i always think it's funny in a way or interesting in the sense that we watch a movie the first time and you're like so like oh that's who did it that's who killed that guy or well that's how they you know oh they discovered they found the treasure or they defeated the bad guy that way and it's such a surprise right and then though then you go back and want to see it again but you know the ending mm -hmm. right so why is that <laughs> you know and i think it's just it's not about the endings it's about the way the story is told and the the, the world that was created that you want to visit again you want to be there uh again with those characters they've become friends or enemies to you or something you know they become part of your life and the message in it hopefully speaks to you in some way that you want to revisit again i mean i don't know i grew up on i saw star wars when i was eight years old so i was there <laughs> you know and in a way it probably is the thing that kicked me into this business you know i i wanted to draw spaceships and, and design that stuff and that led to one step to another to animation uh, and i love the animation in that and people might forget there's you know stop motion animation mm -hmm. in mm -hmm. star wars movies right wow. um and uh i don't know how many times i've seen that movie uh, <laughs> probably a thousand and um every year on may the 4th I'm watching it right i uh you know, I know how it ends. I know every word of it, but I want to watch it again and again, you know? So it's just, there's some way that stories and movies eat into you or get into your bloodstream that you really want to revisit them. I'm the same way with Wally. -E. I can't stop watching that. I swear I've seen it at least 12 times because I, I don't know what it is about it, but I always go back into that story. And then to hear that you were part of it. Yeah. 
I had a, yeah. Well, I had made this short film called Your Friend the Rat at Pixar, which I got to write and direct. It was my first real directing job and writing job, like together. And it was such a mixture of art forms and animation styles. It has a little bit of stop motion in it, too. It's two shots of stop motion. Um, and Andrew Stanton, who directed Wally, when he saw the, the film I made, he was like, Oh, I need you. You need to do these credits because mm. we don't know how to end the movie. <laughs> we pre they previewed it, and everybody thought um, the people, the humans who were these blobby, you know, they couldn't move mm -hmm. anywhere, mm -hmm. would all die on the earth. So, <laughs> on this earth that was dec decimated and, and desiccated. And he said, We need to solve, you know, finish the story in the credits. And, uh, and I want you to do it as if you're, it's like a history of art. You want to go through all the art forms. Yeah. So had to finish the story of Wally, show that everybody's going to be fine. It's all going to be okay. Uh, do it as a history lesson of art. <laughs> and then also make sure people's names were seen and, and got the credits. <laughs> Deserves, did so. that did that change you when you're working on the credits? Because a lot of people will get up before those credits are done, and it's like, no, I have to stay here. I want to make sure that I I at least fall witness to everybody who made this possible. It wasn't one person; it was a team or a city. It's exactly. Oh man, I I think these movies are made not by one person at all. You know, it's not a tour. So a tour theory that you. Hello, moto of making this is it's all the people it's a long process and if it's not um you, you know enjoyable and, and a way to work with these amazing artists and and as a director to create a space for them to bring a hundred and two hundred percent of their abilities then you know i don't know why you're doing this but right. in this business it's just it's the people and so i feel like in credits it's re it's a respect to them so you see it so in wally i really the point of i really wanted to make great credits that people want to stay and sit through the whole thing it's probably maybe one of the one movies or few movies that people do um <laughs> and uh uh you know and I, I actually took that as a badge of honor to do it and we actually got reviewed on the credits <laughs> which was nice um, to do so yeah I respect the people so much who work with me and, and create these films I had an amazing team on the inventor it was um, my co-director Pierre-Luc Grandjean we were like brothers who long lost brothers who found each other mm -hmm. I used his films as reference for the movie and never thought I'd meet him and uh, and he was a stop motion genius he really knows his job and he kind of showed me the ropes and how it works and told me what not to do be too difficult or especially with our low low budget and time and uh and that allowed me to develop the story further even in production to go okay these shots coming up are going to be way too difficult how do we how do i rethink this in a sense that would be even more interesting but also economically done within our time frame within our budget and people would never know the difference. So I think my story development and brain through my career helped me in, in that respect in a, in a huge way. You have a powerful quote in this. The, the quote is, the world, or, yeah, the world will never be easy even with uh, those that have a big brain. I, it's, it's like, my God, that when that moved through you, that had to have been a moment. Yeah, I mean, I don't think the world is easy, even if you have a big brain, right? You have so much up against us, and uh, not one person can solve everything, and we need everybody uh, oftentimes to, to solve things um, together. And just like a movie, you need a, a team of artists to come together to to make this thing into something. It's a, it is like an army, you know, you have, and you have to direct them. And so I feel like with... Our endeavors around us, uh, we have a lot of difficulties these days to, to overcome climate change and all of it. Uh, I think we need all of us to come together in the way we move through our lives uh, and affect each other. Hopefully we could do it in a positive way through our actions and you know, instill in others um, 
you know, with our education and pass on our knowledge to others in a supportive and uh, constructive way in a, in a way that inspires them to do their best work and to go and explore things and work together in, in endeavors that are challenging and, and need everybody to, 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 to do that, you know. I'm always amazed like with the Apollo program and how <laughs> all this group came together diverse group came together to put a man on the moon in a very short time and organization of humanity or people a nation to, to come together to to do a, a task to do something and so I that's what I hope people will do in the future <laughs> we're going on a whole different subject than animation <laughs> that to me that's what storytelling is and, and um, making films is is, is pointing out a way for people to go and inspiring them and uh, making, showing it, I don't know, bringing dreams to life and, and uh, you know, all filmmaking. It's a great, great form. Absolutely. Well, congratulations on The Inventor. You've got to come back to this show in the future, dude. I want to dig deeper into your history. I would love to. Anytime. Thanks, man. Excellent. Sure. Well, you be brilliant today, okay? All right. You too. Thank you. <laughs>